to the Maastricht debate. Go ahead, please. It's a debate. <laughs> uh, well, I think that the youth had to understand, and they understand it, that the world of tomorrow is a completely different world of the world of today. It will be a world of empires, a world of China dominating, India dominating, the US, the Russian Federation. And living in such a world is completely different than 20, 30 or 40 years ago. It will be a world in which our standards, our way of living, our values, our way of thinking of our youth is under threat of these empires. So we need to create really a strong Europe, a united Europe as a counterweight for that. And for that, we need also a new force in the European Union and in this European debate, a centrist, pro-European force, a little bit away from the old tiled parties, socialist and EPP. Certainly the EPP is so tired that they are not on stage this evening after one week already, so it seems so to be that that is the crucial thing to do, a new Europe in a new world. The real problem is, the real problem is this little chart that you see. You see red balloons? That are the American platforms. You see the blue balloons? Maybe the, the color is not right. <laughs> yeah. uh, that are the Chinese and the Asian. And where are the Europeans? That's only the little yellow balloon in the middle. So the problem is there. If we create one standard in Europe, one regulator, we will create also our own Facebook, our own Google, our Thank own you very Amazon. Much, Mr. And that's Dan. the way to go there forward. We now have to turn. Let's see. Oh, Ryan. that is good Ryan. news for Franz Timmermans. You've jumped up to 44%, but Baz Eichout, that is a bit of a breakout performance compared to the overall vote level that the Green Party has in Europe. Uh, and I think that there's a bit of work to do for Guy Hoff. I think Young Obama would say that we are punching above our weight. I think. Well, that's yeah. typical amongst a youth demographic, so probably there's a bit of a match there considering yeah. who might be watching. But it is true you are one of the smaller parties, so take the compliment. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> now time to move to our third section on the future of Europe. <laughs> the continent is facing a period of uncertainty. Inequality is rising. Trust in political parties and public institutions is declining. The United Kingdom has voted to leave the European Union. For the fourth year in a row, immigration tops the list of voter concerns in 22 European countries. Populist movements on both sides of the spectrum have grown. In the last European election, only 28% of people under the age of 25 voted, and just 2% of current MEPs are below the age of 30. This leaves young people underrepresented in European politics, and their concerns low on the priority list. Women currently make up 36% of the European Parliament, and only 7 of the 28 European Commissioners. This raises a number of questions about the future of the European Union. What opportunities should the EU guarantee for this new generation of Europeans? Do critics, skeptics and nationalists have a point about its flaws? We'll move all the earth in the different position. So we have to be responsible as Europeans because a lot depends of, on us. So poverty, extreme poverty on the earth is a big problem. That's why many people are running out of their countries. And uh, we have to help them to build their society that they can live safely there and not to jump anywhere with NATO and the weapons. <laughs> Thank you. Giva Hochstadt of Liberals and Democrats. Now, I was hesitating. I want to talk about European army because I think it's the biggest waste of money inside the European Union to have 28 armies for the moment. But I will take something else, that is European migration policy. Because the nationalists and the populists, I, well, I cannot understand, but I cannot accept, and I think it's the same for the others, that there are still thousands and thousands of people dying in the Mediterranean Sea at all door because of the lack of a European migration policy. Because when there is a problem with migration, whether it's asylum, it's not Europe that is the source of it. It's all the member states who are not willing to deal together with this issue. To have a European border and coast guard, for example. To have European asylum rules, the Dublin system, still blocked in the European Council. To have also a European economic migration, a type of a blue card, because it's nonsense to talk about migration and to say, oh, they cannot enter. This is the lack of European migration policy that makes, in fact, the fortune of nationalists and populists. And that is what would be my first priority, to create it. Thank you.